What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty here and welcome back to another episode from the Miami International Boat Show. In this episode, I'm on a mission guys. I want to find you guys the most affordable around 23, 22 foot center console. I'm going to be looking at boats with only single outboard engines because once you go into twins, although it is easier for docking and stuff, um, it does increase your price significantly and it's harder to maintain, it's more required. So I'm going to be sticking with boats that are um, only with twin motors and single outboards. Right now I am currently on the 2022 22 foot Cobia. It's got a single Yamaha 200 in the back. And we are at the convention center of the boat show right now. And I'm gonna be walking you guys through this boat along with many others that I think are affordable and good starter boat for you guys. Okay, so when you walk up the boat, come here at the transom, you got the Yamaha 200 with your swim platform with a ladder. Walk through the dive door or tuna door. Come back here. This is your fishing area, guys. This is something that's really important to me as a fisherman. I know when we were looking at our first 23 foot center consoles, our family, we were always looking at what um, the fishing accessibility was in the back lake. So this area, you don't want it to be too crowded. You want as much room as possible. So you have as much fishing room as possible so you're not bumping into people. And it's hard to fit that when you're on a smaller center console like this, but um, definitely there are companies that do it better than others. So. For a 22 foot boat, this is a pretty decent amount of space. Okay, you guys can see I'm standing here. I have about this much space. So it's about one and a half person wide to walk through this stack silo. This boat comes equipped with pull holders, cup holders, everything in the back and room for a cooler underneath. If you guys look over here, we have a latch. Opens up and turns us back into a nice big foldable seat, which I'm a big fan of because you can fold it away. It's completely out of the way. And you guys don't want to have to worry about sticking hooks inside your upholstery. Okay, we got one live well back here. Decent sized live well. One thing I am loving about this boat is it has these black, they're like a matte black kind of texture um, accent bars everywhere. They just make it look really sharp. And we have the black T-top up here, which I'm definitely a fan of. We got the nice bench style um, seating over here. Keep it simple. Um, definitely lowers the cost of the boat and you can save some money. And personally, I love these bench house seats more than bucket seats. Okay, if you guys look here, there's actually plenty of room to walk through here. I'm walking through very comfortably. So you're not gonna have to worry about bumping into people when you're walking around your boat, which is really nice because a lot of 22 center consoles are gonna be a little bit tighter than that. Up here, you have a nice built-in seat with a built-in cooler, which is really nice because you can take all of your food and your drinks and everything for the day, put it right here into this built-in cooler, and then you could take that whole entire area for the back cooler right over here. And you can um, you can put all your fishing stuff in there. You can put all your bait and everything because a lot of times we end up mixing our bait with our food and it just gets all kind of slimy and gross. So it's really cool that you have the ability to have your stuff in two different coolers. Pichicho! <laughs> What's up? There's Alfred Montaner, guys. You guys remember him from the Fort Lauderdale boat show? Yeah. It's the Chicho! <laughs> okay, so over here in the front, we have a nice lounge area with these backrests that can either be facing this way or that way. So you can lounge if you want. And they just lift up and turn. Just like that. Very easy. Um, under here, you have some sort of table. And the anchor well. Shot of the center console. You guys got this nice box up here. No, you're good. You guys can put your radios and um, your VHF radio or anything like that inside these box. We had one on our last boat. Um, they're really cool, nice, and it cleans with the dash a little. And here's a shot of your dash with all your switches, your gauges, your electronics, everything there. Let's take a look. Really quickly, just want to make sure I cover the whole boat. Looks like there's some sort of, oh, it's just, I think, a handle on the door over here. And then pretty standard setup in here. It's pretty basic. A couple fuses over there, but overall not a huge cabin, but I'm 5'10", and I could probably just stand up in it. Let me see, actually. All right, so this is a little surprising, actually. I'm 5'10", and I'm standing up almost straight in here. So for a 
22 foot center console that is actually pretty impressive because in our 26 foot center console i can also just barely stand up straight in it so props to cobia on having a nice big standable cabin and i know the question you guys are wondering how much is this boat i was told this exact boat right here eighty-five thousand dollars eighty-five thousand dollars in this beautiful 22 foot cobia could be yours cobia is a great brand they have very high reputation and I would suggest this kind of boat to a beginner boater. All right guys, so the next boat I'm gonna walk around here and take you guys around is a boat that I actually, it's a boat brand I really wanted to get to for my Fort Lauderdale boat show video, but I just, I didn't film the boat and I really regretted it because it was a really cool boat and super affordable. So currently I am on the 25 foot Dusky and you guys might be thinking, well, Ryan, you said like around 23 foot. 25 foot boat can be completely not affordable too big everything well i'm here to tell you guys why you guys can afford this boat and it's really not too big for you first thing i like to say about this boat is that it measures um total length here um excluding the motor so by registration it's 25 foot boat and including in that registration is this big old bracket back here so that bracket is actually included in that 25 by registration so they told me that this boat measures from bow to the back of the transom over there it measures actually 23 foot so it's in our category and it only has a single outboard so let me take you guys around this boat let me show you what it has to offer it's a really good fishing boat for a really affordable price here we are so we're starting with the stern of the boat we have like i said that big bracket with i believe there's a 300 suzuki on the back so it's definitely not going to be underpowered I was just talking to the guy from Dusky here and he said it tops out around uh, 50 miles an hour. So you're definitely cruising and it's plenty of power for the boat. And the boat also has a eight and a half foot beam. So this is your fishing area you're working with, which is a tremendous fishing area. I mean, guys, look at all this room. This right here was about how much room we had with the Cobia that we looked at. And this seat folds down, so we pretty much have double the amount of fishing room back here as we had on that Cobia, which is tremendous. You're not going to be bumping into people. It's fantastic. It's also got nice and wide sides over here. There's one side, there's the other. Great wide sides. Fishing pole holders on the sides. We got a well over here. Huge fish well, and then that goes way back in there. Bilge access. Like I said, this seat flips forward. Buy a live well etched with a nice dusky logo on here. It's very good. We got the basic bench seat over here, which is all you need. And like I said, guys, keep in mind when we're going through this boat, it's a fishing boat. You know, this is, you guys can keep your, um, like your specially stitched um, upholstery and everything like that. And your hard tops, this is a canvas top. You guys keep all that, this is a bare bones. This is a fishing boat, you know, and it, I say that, but it's also, it's built for luxury too. I mean, look at this front area. You got plenty of space to lay out and stuff like that, the sandbar. But when you guys see the price tag, you'll understand why this is a little bit more bare bones. In the One thing this boat doesn't have is a windshield, but I'm sure that's an option of something to get. Okay, here is the um, helm that we're dealing with. So we got a screen. I really like this, you can tuck away. Oops. all your electronics and everything keep them nice and dry keep them safe in there you got your switches up here steering everything is very nicely located along with this oh, i need two hands an area you got your vhf radio over here and then you can also put other radios in here and we'll see i don't see any radios down here so i'm assuming the stereo system will go up here but this box is nice to have. I really like having these boxes that Cobia also had that box in it. Um, very cool feature. Check out the cabin for all your storage purposes. Typical cabin, 23 foot boat. You're not going to be able to stand up in that unless you're, I don't know, like four feet tall or four and a half feet tall. One thing you guys might be able to notice is this tremendous bow flare that this has. I mean, just look how wide of a flare. Let me put my hand down. This is my hand over here. The bow flare is huge. Let's get a shot. Look at that flare on the boat. That's going to really help when you're out there and you're pouncing through the waves. It's going to take the waves and just throw the water off to the side of the wash, off to the side. You're probably going to stay really dry on this boat. So you got lots of storage as needed. Got fish well over here, fish well up there. 
another well over here, anchor well over here. And over here we have a built-in cooler. So we'll lift up the seat. Built-in cooler, there we go. So just like that Cobia we checked out, um, you can keep all your food and drinks in this cooler. And then there is plenty of room back here. Although they put the live well over here, but you have still plenty of room to put your own Yeti cooler or something like that. In the back, you can keep all your fishing bait and everything like that all separate from all your food and drinks that way you don't contaminate it okay and that pretty much does it for the walk around of this 25 foot dusky here and here's the moment you guys are waiting for this 25 foot dusky is gonna run you $95,000 now you guys got to think about how much boat you're actually getting for that $95,000 it's a bigger boat 25 foot although it's 23 inside eight and a half foot beam really big boat if you're a fisherman this is a perfect boat if you don't really care about all those extra luxuries and backrest and fancy upholstery and everything this right here this 25 foot dusky perfect boat for you perfect starter boat great for the family great for sandbars great for fishing great for everything props to dusky for making an amazing boat and affordable for everyone okay guys so so far we have covered the 25 foot dusky along with the 22 foot uh cobia both great um, options for you guys as a starter center console. And right now, I'm gonna be walking you guys through the 23 foot Pursuit Center console. So this is a 23 foot boat that measures about 24 and a half overall length and is powered by a single Yamaha 300 motor. So we're gonna start up in the bow of this boat and show you guys what's going on here. So you have lots of room up here. Um, you have two separate seatings over here along with a forward facing seat over here which is also the cabin but we'll get into that in one second up here as always you have your anchor well so it looks like we have a windlass with this and something that's actually really cool is that right here this is actually a controller for the windlass so you can take that controller and you can just sit here and use the windlass yourself our windlass that we have currently on our boat requires me to be up here in the front and my dad at the helm and communicate back and forth because there are switches over there. So everything about the anchoring can be done back here, which is really, oh, up here, which could be really nice. we got cup holders conveniently placed. Also, I saw this over here. This is a nice little convenient step. So you don't have to lean over. You can actually just step up on the step and come over here and deal with your anchor stuff. It's, it's a very small feature to put a step like that, but honestly, it can make such a big difference when you're out on the boat, and that little step can make your life so much easier. So underneath these two lounge seatings, looks like we have a little bit of storage. Yep, looks like it's got drains, so it could be used as a fish well. That's probably what I would use it for. Nice long kingfish wahoo, that kind of stuff would fit great in here. And we have it on both sides, right over there. We also have these adjustable headrests. So you can either have it in this position or in this position right here. And that's simply done by lifting up and turning. I believe the Cobia had the same feature as this. And it's kind of becoming a standard thing now to have that option of a different sitting position very easily. And it can be tucked away, stored away, or taken off the boat completely if you don't want. Okay, and like I said before, this whole thing is gonna open up and turn into the cabin. So with ease, we're gonna take the latch, turn it, and then pull. Very easy, big door, but very light because it's on a hydraulic system. So here's your cabin, very nice, spacious. Let me hop on in. Okay, we're on in here in the cabin. Okay, like I said, I'm 5'10". I'm standing up straight now in the highest point. It's about the same amount of room as we got on that Cobia. Um, you know, pretty average standard height for this size boat. Um, like I said, it's got a head and everything like that. And easy access to your panel, your switches and everything like that. Okay, so we're going to hop out of the cabin here. And like I said, guys, very easy. Just close this door. Lock it back up. You guys are all good to go. So like I said, this boat has um, an 8.6 beam. So it's got plenty of room to walk around the sides. You could fit only one person walking on each side, but with this size boat, you're really not going to be getting any more than that. You really can't expect it. There's just not enough boat. These side gunnels overall are pretty high. If you take a look at where I am, my kneecaps are down here. So you can pretty much fight your fish and lean on here and not have to worry about falling into the water. 
I'm specifically reviewing these center consoles, all ones that are capable offshore. I could take you guys on some more like bay boat kind of style boats, but um, right now I just want to focus this video on kind of capable uh, offshore capable boats. So we have some rod storage over here, you can fit or bush storage or anything you want. Same thing on the other side over here. Along with we have our fresh water and raw water wash down, which is nice to have in the boat. This was a little neat feature here. They incorporated a built-in cutting board here with spots to put your knife, pliers, rigs, anything like that, which is really thoughtful. And here's your live wall. Nice big live wall. But I really like this cutting board feature over here. It's uh, something I really haven't seen before. So with this boat, we have a hard T-top and we actually have one of these boxes up here, which I'm surprised to see. I'm actually surprised how many boats still have this box up here. Once again, you can put your radio up here, your VHF up here, anything like that. The console comes with an acrylic windshield and it looks a little bare here so they're missing um, all the options in this boat it looks like but you can put your big old um, sonar finders and everything like that over here. You got your helm, everything like that. Pretty basic. Um, like I said they don't have a lot here. They got a little step for you so you can sit down in the seat, put your feet up, look out. Here's my view, flat foot, standing so you can see over the bow plenty. Um, like I said, it's a 23 foot center console, so visibility is generally pretty good and easy to see. So if you guys look over here, we do have two separate seatings. They're pretty much two bucket seats, but when you put them both down, they're actually connected over here. So it's a little bit of a hybrid between a um, bench seat and a bucket seat, which is pretty nice that it gives you that kind of option to still take up the entire seat if you want to. Do. It has armrests that fold down very easily on both sides. So underneath the seat, I was just taking a look. Um, it's actually the cooler is sticking out. So this is your back of your cooler. There's no, input, there's no storage, there's no wall over here. So if you guys come towards the stern over here, you can see here's the cooler. And I'm not sure if this slides out. I don't believe so, but you could just open it up. You got plenty of room over here. So you store your cooler underneath. And like I said, um, this can be mainly your bait and stuff like that, your bait cooler. But unfortunately, it doesn't appear that yeah, so one downfall to this boat here is that in the other boats, you had a cooler in the back, like this one. And then you had a cooler in the front too that was like built in. And you can put all your sandwiches and drinks and everything on the front cooler. And you can use the back one for your bait or vice versa. And um, because of the cabin being connected to this part of the console, it doesn't allow them to put a cooler over here. So you're stuck with just the one cooler in the back. It's still a decent sized cooler that can fit on there but still it just limits you a little bit. So you gotta keep that in mind. Got rods up in the top, uh, only four, which is a little surprising. Could have fit a couple more there, but everything's customizable. We got no rods or anything like that in the back. So it's just plain, no tackle stations, no nothing, none of that. But you do have your little station over here. So I guess this could be used to cut bait on, store your knives and everything like that. So they have their back seating over here partially hidden away. So the headrest is still popping out here, but the seat is here. So I'm gonna fold it out for you guys. Okay, so here's your seat folded out, just like that. Oh, you're good. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> so here's your seat folded out, just like that. And then you have about this much walking space when it's folded out. So let me go put this back. Okay, so as we make our way over to the back of the boat, we do have like what I like to call a little tuna door over here, right? So it comes, but if you guys notice this little flop, I might be wrong, but I think that's a doggy door which is absolutely hilarious and it's a great feature. Very thoughtful, it's definitely something I've never seen on a boat. Uh, I don't think any boat before. So that's really cool to see actually. If we take a look, there's actually a huge, huge swim platform back here. You guys see how big this is? Let me go stand on it. Here's my feet. We got a couple feet back here. It's very impressive how much room back here. Very deep well where the motor is. Um, so that's neat i guess if you like to use a swim platform then um i feel like the space could have been slightly better utilized to be completely honest i'm not sure how far back the transom goes but um that's a lot of swim platform for my taste personally um i would have liked to see just a little bit more fishing area over here but if you compare this to the cobia's fishing area and accessibility i think this is more room i'll have to go watch back the footage but i think this is more room than there was on the cobia so that's definitely a big pro you guys know i love my fishing space so you guys look down here, it looks like we have some more storage. Oh, that was my knee that cracked. Yep, little storage container over here. 
maybe on this side too. Nope, not on this side. So just one side of storage uh, space. And like I said, guys, everything's customizable nowadays. So if this boat, you see something that's different that you don't like, um, I'm sure you can contact your dealer and you can customize everything you want. You're just gonna have to pay extra. Lastly, we'll just take a look at the cup holders. We got one back facing one side. Same thing on this side over here, we got the two. We have none back here, the four up here, and no other ones in the front. So it looks like you just have the two on this side and two on the other side with the four up top. So this 23 Pursuit is gonna run you $136,000 here at the Miami Boat Show. So you compare that, the Dusky was 25 foot boat. I think that was like a $90,000 boat. Cobia, I don't honestly remember what it is. If I, I'll find out, I'll look at it, I'll throw it up on the screen here. Um, so yeah, you gotta compare what you're getting for your buck. And um, yeah, and that's gonna do it for this walkthrough of this Pursuit 23 foot center console. Pursuit did a great job with this boat. And I'm not sure if the video is gonna be up before or after this one, but I also did a walkthrough of their boat that won the Innovation Award, which was a 42 foot center console by Pursuit. You guys definitely should check out that video. It's a fantastic boat. It was unbelievable the amount of innovation that was in that boat. Um, so yeah, this Pursuit, awesome boat, and uh, would recommend it for your first boat, center console. All right, and that's gonna wrap up our comparison of these three great choices for center consoles around the 23 foot range that are great for beginner boats, still easy to trailer, and somewhat affordable when you compare new boat prices. If you guys like this video, as always, please hit that like button and consider subscribing down below. It really helps me out a lot. We still have one more Miami Boat Show video, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you guys made it this far, drop in the comments which uh, boat was your favorite, the Cobia, the Dusky, or the Pursuit. It's a really tough choice for me. Um, personally, I really like that Dusky just because of my style of fishing and what I do with boats. But um, I think they're all great choices. So drop in the comments which one was your favorite. And if you guys like this video, I really think you're gonna like this video on the left side of the screen over here. We're at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show 2021. I compared 32 foot center consoles. It's a great video. You guys should totally watch that next. Until my next video, remember to keep living salty.